right-hand side would be y is equals to the square root of r squared minus alpha n squared. Now, if I rearrange this, it'll take a very similar form, which is alpha n squared plus y squared is equals to r squared, which is simply the radius of a circle is r, and it's, it's, it's a circle of radius r. Now, bearing in mind again that r is equal to um, a m a squared v naught divided by 2 h bar. Okay, yeah, I think that is r. So, this is what we have for r. And then, what I have is a circle over here. See, this is a circle for a certain value of the width of the well and the potential. And if I were to increase the width of the well, I get a larger circle. Okay, so R is the radius of a circle, and this is for the right, right hand side. Now, what about the left hand side? The left hand side is basically, okay, let's handle the, the top one. Is this uh, minus alpha n cotangent alpha n that is given by these dotted lines over here? Okay, so we know what is cotangent. Cotangent is 1 divided by tangent. We know tangent has a period of pi. So, cotangent also has a period of pi. So if I were to give, graph out the, the alpha n tangent um, alpha n, okay, what I have is the solid line, which is given like that over there. Now, as you can see, you do not see the, the negative portion, okay, because we're taking the positive square root. So just forget about the negative square root. You don't see the negative portion. But for the alpha n tangent alpha n, what we get is, 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 the, is the graph like that. It goes this way and it comes down from here. It goes this way and it comes down from here as a period of pi. Now, cotangent also has the same period, but all you need to do is that, as you can see, when the tangent graph is, goes to infinity, 1 divided by infinity is 0, so it draws back to 0 over here. So the, the cotangent graph goes like that, or the alpha minus alpha cotangent. Okay, if the cotangent is actually the other way, but since it's minus, you just flip them the other side. So this is what we get. Minus alpha n cotangent um, alpha n is given by the dotted line. Alpha n tangent alpha n is given by the solid line. And square root of r squared minus alpha n squared is given by this solid line, which is also a circle of radius r. And all we need to do right now is just look at the graph. And then I can say that they intersect over here for a given width of the well uh, a and the potential v naught. And a solution for my alpha is going to be here like so. And if I put this alpha value inside over here, I would get the energy values. Right? So, why is it discrete? Very simple. Because we see we got these trigonometry functions which, you know, have a certain period. And let's just say we will take this circle, let's take this outside circle. Okay, I see that the first solution, n equals to 0, is the one intersection over here. I will find it where it intersects with the axis alpha n. I will get this value over here, that is one solution. Intersect again, another solution, intersect again, another solution, and intersect again, and another solution, like so. Now, most logically, if I were to decrease the width of the well by decreasing the value of A, I would decrease R, and the radius would shrink over here, and I would also have the last number of solutions, which is given by here over there. Okay, we would label it um, N equals to zero as the first solution. And we also see that we will only have uh, these positive values of alpha N, okay? There, 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 there's a, there, there won't be a time where we will get a zero for alpha, in which case corresponds to zero energy, but the width has to have a finite uh, A, okay? Has to have a finite uh, width. The well. Okay, so there is to it. So let's just draw some um, some facts before we, we end. Now, the width of well in which state n is allowed is r equals to n pi divided by 2. So very easy to see that. See, if, if I have the, the width of the well, okay, yeah, if, if the, sorry, r. So we need to discuss about r right now. We will adjust the value for a so that r is uh, n pi n pi divided by 2. So n pi divided by 2, let's just say n is equal to 2. So when n is equal to 2, the wave of the well goes up to here, and I'm very sure that it will intersect twice, one over here and one over here. Okay, now if it's 3, it's 3 pi divided by 2, it will intersect 3 times, which is one over here, one over here, and one over here. So, so let's just say that, you know, r is, is a certain multiple of pi divided by 2, the number n will tell me how many solutions I get. Obviously, the larger value of, of n which corresponds to the larger value of r, I will get, you know, that many number of solutions. And also, finally, the limiting case, as the potential v naught tends towards infinity, so as the potential v naught tends towards infinity, I would also know that r tends towards infinity, okay? Obviously, the mass of the particle is positive. And then when r tends towards infinity, I'm dealing with the solution, so r is going to stretch, it's going to be like a circle of infinite radius. Now, I can't really picture it, but I'm going to deal with the solutions at which point, at which they intersect at the asymptotes, right? The asymptotes. Now, as you can see, the nature of the tangent and cotangent graphs, they stretch towards infinity like that, okay? So, as tangent alpha n tends towards infinity, we know that for the tangent graph, okay, alpha n will be equal to n pi divided by 2, or n pi, sorry, n plus 1 pi divided by 2, okay? Because, you see, this is one point over here, pi divided by 2, 3 pi divided by 2, and 5 pi divided by 2. These are the asymptotes when 
tangent alpha n tends towards infinity. Why do I want to let tangent alpha n tends towards infinity? Because when the potential tends towards infinity, r tends towards infinity, and so I want to find the solutions at the asymptotes. Now for the minus alpha n cotangent alpha n, when cotangent alpha n tends towards infinity, I know that alpha n would be equal to, what do I have? A pi, a 2 pi, so basically an n pi. Okay, and also I know that the intersections of either of the graphs would be a solution. Will give me a value for alpha n, thereby giving me a value of the energy, uh, en. So I know that intersection occurs in the asymptotes where alpha n is equal to n pi divided by 2, where n is equal to 1, 2, 3. This is just basically combining these two um, uh, sets of values for alpha n, which I'm combining over there. And then when, re when I rearrange um, n pi divided by 2 into the energy value en, I will get this. And it shouldn't be any surprise that this is the energy values for an infinite square well as expected or as we did for the previous problem, I think two problems ago. So everything is consistent now. We started off with a finite square well potential with V0. We let V0 test towards infinity. We get the infinite square well potential and the energy eigenvalues tally. Okay, they are discrete and they are exactly the same. Okay, by substituting n pi divided by 2 inside over here. So finally, that is what we have. Seeking out a graphical solution to this finite square potential, rearranging the, the two equations that we have into a suggestive form, knowing that now r is going to be fixed based on the mass of the particle, which is not that important because it's always sometimes fixed, the width of the well, which is a, and the potential v0, graphing out the, the trigonometry functions, and then finding where it intersects with this circle of radius r, Intersecting, getting the values of alpha n, putting inside the, the equation for en, and then there we go, we got the energy values, right? So, yeah, this is how you normally solve a problem where we need graphical methods to find the discrete energy values.